Hello guys, hope you're doing well. On this week, I want to do something a little bit different. So I was supposed to have somebody schedule, have a meeting with them, but unfortunately some stuff happened and we were not able to get together. However, eh, I want to take advantage of the opportunity and also, again, make that daily or, well, not daily, but make that video, that weekly video go on um, on this week, I just want, I think, I owe it to you guys. I think sometimes I don't do the best job at explaining some drills or explaining some things about, like, the coach methodology or stuff like that. So, basically, I just want to go through my Instagram, see different posts, and then we can do kind of a small breakdown about the, the different posts that I do. Then we can see, like, some clips, some highlights, and we can just talk about whatever it comes down. So, it's kind of an informal thing. However, I hope you get a lot of value from this and just have like um, another point of view of the things that you see in Instagram, right? So let me see here. I'm going to try to share the screen. And then hopefully this is the screen over here. Good. So here we are. Let's start with, with the basics one, okay? So let's start. I don't know for how long I'm going to do this. I think we'll just do it for a short period of time. And then... We'll just call it out. I'm basically hoping next week I can have a guest and a goalkeeper coach here. So first of all, just talking about the first post, about this learning opportunity. So if you're a goalkeeper coach as well, make sure you take advantage of here. You can have a 20% discount on the monthly rates and also on the yearly rates. Goalkeeping development is basically like this software where... You can see like different interviews, different meetings with of different goalkeeper coaches. So, for example, goalkeeper coaches from Germany, from Spain, and all of this, they come together and they talk about different methodologies. They talk about different drills. They talk about all this stuff that will for sure help you to grow as a goalkeeper coach. Also, they have different courses. I'm um, still doing the tactical course. So, it teach me about the positioning of the goalkeeping. It teach me about ways the goalkeeper should be playing, where he needs to be located, and all these little details that, again, is going to add you to have a different point of view from your thoughts. And finally, something that is also really interesting, they have, like, these clinics where the goalkeeper coaches go and they do, like, their own training, and they have the goalkeepers there, so you get to see different kind of trainings. And again, at the end, it comes down to your own methodology. I have my own methodology. I agree with some stuff. I disagree with some stuff. But at least it's important for you to be open-minded and listen and try to understand why people are doing stuff, right? Besides just being, oh, this is my only way and this is how it should be work. Now, well, I have I have learned a lot about watching all these videos. Uh, there are some stuff that I don't implement. There are some stuff that I implement. So make sure you check it out. You have a 10 days trial, so go ahead and check it out. Okay, second post here, full training under 40 seconds. Let's watch it really quick. Boom. So, perfect. Okay. As you can see, this is kind of part of my methodology again, and this is one of the perfect examples. So, again, I like to start from a really basic a scenario, like a really drill a scenario, and then go more for a life a scenario over here. So, basically, I've been working with my goalkeepers to start more coordination, more just like a warm-up, being more coordinated, being able to be your toes, being able to move a lot because... Being your toes is going to help you a lot on moving and taking decisions and being agile. So that's going to be really crucial. And goalkeepers need to be really coordinated and be really good at your football, right? So for me, I've been starting to, even in the warm-up, just start adding this stuff. And now, like, all these kind of movements where the goalkeeper starts from one spot to another and then he goes, stuff, break. Look over here, like, she... Right now, all the weight is in the toes. So basically, that's what you want to start elaborating. That way, they, they are light on those feet and they're not like all flat-footed. And it's going to take longer for them to react to any scenario. So being really light, 
boom, taking a lot of steps, moving around, taking different change of direction, and the game is the same as now you are facing here, now you need to go to the other side, now you need to drop, now you need to go forward. And of course, focusing on about the catching, start diving a little bit, so you cannot start from zero to 100. So again, I like to start with this easy basic and then start touching the ground, touching the ground, and then going more into deep. As you can see here in the, um, or oh, the goal of the um, practice was practicing those one by one scenarios, right? So being here, moving around, and then taking the decision, making the save up. And then again, we went from the drill specific part, right? Where, as you can see, the goalkeeper was dropping and then the ball was coming. They know where the ball is coming and now she just needs to do the technical aspect. Now we go and we open up to a different kind of role. So now this is a more reactive thing. See that there's less cons, there's less things, right? Here, there are three different scenarios that the goalkeeper could have. Number one will be just the ball coming to the side and then them attacking the ball, right? Second scenario, okay, will be me playing to the person that is behind of me. I mean, not behind of me, but the person that is in the back. And then they're taking the shot. Okay, so now the goalkeeper needs to react to that. Again, it comes down to the footwork. She needs to move. She needs to be light on those feet, get in the right position, and then react for that. The save wasn't the greatest, but that's okay. And then last scenario, I will just turn and then here. Great technique from here, cutting the angle, reading it really well. So then we start moving around the goal. So we start on this side. Now we're going to the middle. Same thing. Same as scenarios. Okay, and now we go back to going to a more realistic scenario okay besides this thing over here so the goal of this thing the red thing i don't know if you can see it in the middle of the goal was for them to just be located there backing up and then using more like um reflect stuff scenario as well kind of but again as you can see at the beginning we were working on the cons about like dropping moving and all those stuff so here I'm implementing both and combining both scenarios. So the goalkeeper is in the middle, right? She's dropping from that red thing. So you're using the full board that we just talked about, depending on the moment of the game. So if the touch was here, is she going to drop what she's going to do? And then from there, we have different variations. So I could even take a shot, uh, have my touch and take a shot, dribble, and then be a 1v1. Or I could have played a ball to the person that is on the left, and then they can go for a 1v1, making them to actually execute the drill that we were doing at the beginning, right? So everything is adding up for you to have like a purpose practice. So here's the other scenario. Now she's dropping, now she needs to move, like in the cones. Boom, a scenario, she's dribbling, and then boom, we're for that one one, okay? Again, that was kind of the full training on the 40 seconds. Different variation, different things to start implementing and being mindful about whenever you have a practice. Okay, improve your scoops. Scoops is a really hard technique. Honestly, I think it's like one of the most underrated techniques because it can look like really easy from the from the eye, but honestly, it takes a lot of coordination, a lot of timing, measuring the ball the right one, right? So being able to do that, remember special things about the technique. As you can see, ensure you're in the right position. So you want to be behind the ball. Use the proper hand position, okay? the baseball here, right? You don't want to catch it like this or stuff like that. You have, you need to have that baseball glove position. Practicing for sure. And then the good footwork. Footwork is going to be crucial. Again, footwork, footwork, footwork. Look, moving those feet quick. Boom. Taking that step forward. That's going to be also crucial, okay? So, something that I see a lot about goalkeepers. In this case, this is not the case, of course. She's doing an amazing job. Here, she's stepping with the left foot. Good. Okay, her body is designed, well, not designed, but her body wants to go this way. This is going to be a more comfortable way. So she gives herself a better opportunity to actually perform the technique right. Now, if she goes to the right, then her hands will be coming here and her body will go into the opposite side. That will make it hard for her to have a smooth technique. Boom, the closest to a ball will be a left foot. She catch it, and there you go. And then, of course, you can fall, follow through, or you can just stay there. I rather to follow through, I think it's more comfortable and more secure, kind of. But that's up to you. Again, this is more promotion with goalkeeper developing. Okay, this is the Ironman. Okay, this drill. I love this drill. So 
the idea behind Israel, again, a lot of things, I just pause, I don't give really a good context behind, but we had conditioning, so we actually had like the whole practice, and then at the end, the players were doing conditioning, and now I'm trying to incorporate more of a goalkeeper-specific conditioning besides them like running a long time, even though, again, and I said it before, I believe goalkeepers get a lot of benefits of actually running long distances. But anyways, we were doing more of a goalkeeper. I believe we didn't have that much time for us to train with the goalkeepers. So that was the goal behind this. And then the action, we start, first of all, we start with a drill that was jumping, 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 jumping. So they were already kind of sore now. And now I put this drill where they needed to perform different goalkeeper activities at a high, a high speed, right? And as you can see, it's not the cleanest technique, it's not the cleanest stuff. They are tired, of course, but when you're tired and you start performing all these things and then you can start performing well, you get better, right? So first first thing, she goes up. So she needs to have the jump. She needs to go for it. Then she needs to roll the ball, play with me. Now she's playing back. She needs to have a pass, have a touch, play over here, reposition, make the shots, and take, take uh, make to save, sorry. So quick, quick transition. And again, now you know the behind, behind uh, the reason behind it. Happy Easter. Yeah, today's Easter. <laughs> Dealing with crosses. Awesome. So, well, the video, if you have seen the video, it talks a lot about, well, it actually explains a lot. I, I think the video is like one minute long. So I really don't want to go through it. But something to be mindful, just remember. The knee that needs to come in front should be the other knee. So, for example, in this video, in this case, the first, hold on, let me see if I can put it. The first one that she comes, she should have come with the opposite knee. Because, again, whenever she comes, if the ball is coming on this trajectory, so the ball is coming from here, you are basically wanting to cover the players that are here, right? You don't want to really protect the players that are here. So that's something that we need to work on. And again, there are a lot of things to work on. Being mindful about those things. So you want to go with that opposite knee, that way you're protecting yourself. Okay, full transition. Again, different scenario. This training or this practice was more about distribution. Again, you don't need to do all those fancy drills of like having all these cones, having all this stuff. Just simple stuff or, or stuff like this that are like game scenario things will help you. Because at the end, you have two different outcomes. You have the outcome where you are doing most of repetition, most of repetition, most of repetition until the end that you actually get to learn it. But also whenever you're really mindful about the specific technique and you have it in your mind and you can see it in your mind, then you can also improve that way. So you have both scenarios. In fact, they say that normally the second scenario is a little bit better to learn more than the first scenario where you are actually not even thinking about what you're doing. Whenever you're able to analyze and understand what you're doing, then things get better, right? Oh, hold on, because I think I push this. Good. So the transition, so with a, a small passing thing, something I like to incorporate about my drills is, for example, if the distribution is wrong or something like that, then it's over basically. So part of this in the other exercise, I believe so, was he needs to play there. He needs to be, he needs to have like good passes because after those passes, then the cross is coming. So actually the other goalkeepers are also working, right? So the passes start here. Now the other goalkeeper is passing to the other one. The other one needs to catch it, needs to do an action, needs to play with the other goalkeeper. Now the other goalkeeper is making a run and now the other goalkeeper is actually putting the ball in, okay? So even if you're outside, if you're not like the main goalkeeper, if you're not the goalkeeper that is in goal, you're still working and you still need to be mindful about that, okay? Perfect, good dealing, good side volleys. Let's keep it going. The goal review. We're just gonna do two more videos, I believe. Again, here for you to share your thoughts, saying what you think. I think is that in the in the real you cannot really look at but on the real scenario if you leave like he was quick for was coming out then he stopped for a couple of seconds so at this moment he could have actually been over here i believe so, from what i saw 
and then here he will just need to dive. Like you barely see these English goalkeepers actually attacking the ball. Again, they are really into like that case and like looking so aesthetic and looking so pretty. And if you disagree with this, watch Ederson against Pickford or any other British goalkeeper. Or oh, not Ederson, Alison as well. Like they will just go down and grab the ball, right? So they could have just stepped, dive, grab the ball, Benicio will jump it or have some contact. But I still, anyways, the save is good, okay? At the end, he ended up making the save, get the rebound, unlucky, they score. But again, you could have performed a different technique and probably will have saved that. Okay, let's do one more video. Here, the same thing we were talking about, the coordination. Again, and see here. So, this was a training in Colombia, right? And again, here, if you're a goalkeeper coach, be mindful about this. Or even a goalkeeper, or even a person. You don't know all the secrets in life. Stuff like this, me training with other things, with other people, or me watching different trainings, help me to improve, help me to see what will work, what I believe is right. And then I can incorporate to my practice. So this is something I took from Colombia. I was like, yeah, it makes sense. I will just start adding it to my practices sometimes. So here it goes. And um, perfect. Let's do the last video. Well, that was the podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, last goalkeeper training. Same thing. We have been working on the footwork. Keep working on the footwork. Also, something that I don't like to do is just like, having one topic one day and then the next day just having such a different topic. So if I want to work on something specific, for example, distribution, I need our goalkeepers need to improve in distribution or something like that, then I will focus for it for a period of time, probably a week or something. That way they can be more mindful about it and not just be like, okay, we're doing scoops today and tomorrow we're just crossing the ball, stuff like that. Again, that's me. If you have a different point of view, then it's you. But coordination, a lot of coordination, starting my practices with coordination, as we spoke about, being agile, being able to jump, start touching the ground, start diving a little bit, as we spoke, Boom. being mindful about that step, pushing the technique, we need to clear up a little bit there, but that's fine. Step, good. And then we start incorporating more, more drill, right? So things were the environment is designed by me. It's not like on the game that the environment is something that is a weird outcome. You don't know what's going to happen on the game. Here you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen. So play the first ball for her to have their touch, then her catch, and then we're playing on flying, right? That was kind of my goal with this practice, being able to take the ground. I think we have been struggling a lot about like those high balls. So that's something I want to work on. I want to improve on that jumping rate, diagonal. So now, see, we took the rope out. Now we're just keeping that up. Again, same thing, same scenarios, different angles, and same thing. Having the touch, passing, repositioning, and I'm making the save. My shooting wasn't the greatest there. But at the end, we take away everything, and now we play, and then we just shoot, okay? So again, I think this is actually something that I want to start doing more often. Uh, just giving a little bit more of, more of context on these videos, giving you an, an, of, an idea of my practices, giving you an idea of all the information that I'm putting. If you have any questions, again, don't feel free to reach me on Instagram, on the webpage, whatever you want, even here on YouTube, just feel free. Um, thanks for watching. Again, if you're on the Spotify, I figure out that you can actually put the videos on here. So I'll upload it in Spotify with the video as well. If you want to listen, it's okay. But definitely, you probably need to watch this because I'm talking about the videos that I'm showing. But thank you very much and hope to see you next week.